Okay, Friday forecast time. Sean Callahan, let's talk first before we move towards Oklahoma. Let's put a bow on Buffalo. What was your biggest takeaway from Saturday's win? You know, just a gritty performance for a lot of reasons. Number one, Adrian Martinez, he was pressured 14 of 24 pass dropbacks. Just pure individual efforts to, to make it happen. The 71-yard run and and the, the, the deep shots that he connected on in the game. We saw four plays in that game last year, Andy, that were bigger plays than Nebraska had all of 2009 or 20. So four plays in Saturday's game that were big in the, bigger than any plays play in 2020. Ago. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the runs and the three pass plays. Well, we talk about it before the game as we do every week before game time on Facebook Live, and, and it's interesting that you had mentioned that home runs were going to be the key. Get away from the singles. Let's hit home runs. They're going to need home runs against Oklahoma. Yeah, you're not going to beat um, a quality opponent like Oklahoma with just little chunks. I mean, you have to hit on a couple deep shots, and that's Samore Torre. That's whoever your tight ends, if those guys are going to be back, right, right. Oliver Martin. Um, the running backs have to hit those, quote, base runs to open up more things down the field. So much more of Scott Frost's offense has to be there. And let's face it, the offensive line. Through three games, there's a lot to be desired there in terms of just their ability to execute on those base run plays and then their ability to protect Martinez, who against the two FBS teams Nebraska's faced, was hurried over 50% of his dropbacks in both those games. Yeah, Scott Frost saying Monday that it's not just the offensive line in terms of the run game. It's not just the running backs. It's the wide receivers. It's the tight ends. It's the whole unit working together. But there's no doubt they're going to have to get some of those base run plays working at three to four to five yards a gain if they're going to beat a team like Oklahoma. Yeah, you have to keep safeties guessing versus knowing what's coming. And when safeties don't know what's coming, that's when big things can happen down the field. That's when you get better matchups. But when you know it's a pass, it's a lot easier to guard any team in college football, not just Nebraska. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, and I thought it was promising against Buffalo late in the game. Gabe Irvin finally started to connect on a couple, and they've really repped him a lot, and it took three games, and maybe that started off something for him going forward. I know people watching are curious about who's going to be available, who won't be. Scott Frost doesn't disclose injury information, but he did say, at least on Monday, that he didn't rule anyone out, which is good news for some of those guys who either were knocked out of Saturday's game or wasn't even dressed for Saturday's game. Let's talk defensively for the Blackshirts. Another game without uh, uh, giving up a touchdown in the single digits, actually. This is a pretty good stretch of defense for Nebraska, is it not? Seven straight games. Andy, of 400 or less yards for Nebraska on defense. That's the best stretch they've had since 2009, 2010. And there's some pretty good players on those defenses, as we know, in 9 and 10. Um, you know, you look at the points. Six straight quarters now, Andy, without a touchdown uh, for Nebraska's defense. So um, it's arguably as good of a stretch of defense as we've seen under Nebraska since Scott Frost has been here. That being said, they're going to be tested mightily on Saturday. Oklahoma with 116 points through two games. That's the second most in the nation. Yeah, and you know what you're getting. And I think as a team, that should have you locked in all week that you are going to play arguably one of the top two or three offenses in the country, led by maybe one of the best offensive head coaches in the country in Lincoln Riley, and a guy that was favored to win the Heisman on a lot of people's boards, Spencer Rattler. So. That has to have your focus and preparation locked in right there when you see that. Yeah, Lincoln Riley, fifth season, his career record, 47-8. and eight. I want to ask you about the rivalry because obviously that's a huge storyline, the 50th anniversary of the game of the century. How big of a deal is it for the current players, or is this game more for the uh, older folks like me yeah, <laughs> that, it, to look at an old rivalry like this? It's more for the older folks. I mean, you heard Ben Stilley, who, who's not a, old, or not a young guy. He's a mm -hmm. six-year senior. You said he was 13 years old the last time these teams played in the Big Ten, Big 12 championship yeah. game in 2011. I can't get these conferences right, on. I know. Soon uh, to be SEC, see, right? I, yeah. I, I was like, how does this feel to know that this is going to be an SEC versus Big Ten game in a couple <laughs> years? But I, I, I think you're right, Andy. It, it's more about us old guys talking about what this game means the players don't know right right they don't know but the coaches do scott frost said this is one of the games he looked forward to the most as a kid and now he gets to coach in it that's got to be a pretty cool thing for him no doubt and you, you just look at the history and the, the series in the big 12 kind of faded away sure. um oklahoma at first didn't you know play nebraska every year in the big 12 it was every other every two years they played a series so um, but, yeah, you, you go back to what this game meant. I mean, this was the Alabama-Georgia, the Alabama-Auburn. The You know, th this was a premier game 
um, in college football, the, the game every year for many, many years. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a good one. Oklahoma against Nebraska. It's an 11 a.m. kick, and the Fox people are bringing out big guns with <laughs> Gus Johnson and Joel Clatt along with Jenny Tapp with the call.